<laughs> it, well, that was one thing they was wrong about. <laughs> They're not wrong about much. You heard a telephone? I did. I hope mine's off. Oh, my God. Better check it, Miss Hogan. <laughs> I think I turned it off. Well, it's lightning. That's different. We want lightning. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Y'all good, y'all? Everybody all right? Amen. Man, I had an excellent day. I must have got close to 200 chapters in the Bible today. I was just sitting there hour after hour just listening to the Word of God go by, just quoting it and listening and crying and screaming. and Who knows what they thought that those people thought. <laughs> they probably going to have something to say to y'all. But hopefully prayer, you're all right with prayer, I hope. <laughs> Holy Ghost. Uh, I'd like y'all to pray for Mexico. Uh, right now there's a hurricane headed there. Uh, it's headed straight at our work. It's going to hit them head on. I prayed for it, so it's my fault. Uh, we need rain. So there you go. You're going to get like 40 inches in like three days. It's one of those big ones. And uh, right now it's just cat one. So I'm all right with category two, but that's, that's enough. Okay. Let's hold it right there. Yeah. And I'm all right with that 40 inches, but anything more than that, and all them watersheds get a little bit, a little bit full. So I need y'all to Please pray about that. Remember that. My sons, my, our work, we have a thousand churches right in the path of that thing. So I need you all to please remember that I, I want it to go. Please don't turn it. I need it to go right over the top of our property. I got 4,000 orange trees that need to drink of water. Because I got to feed the poor. You can't do it if you don't have fruit or vegetables to give them. Right? To do that, you need water. In this time of year, if you ask for water, you're going to get a hurricane. So there you are. Holy Ghost. All right. <clears throat> Ms. Hogan, uh, t uh, you know, told me last night I was a little bit aggressive. She didn't say it in a negative way. She said it in a positive way. Uh, because I'm not as aggressive with some American churches as I am with you. Now. That's good for you. Let me tell you why. Because I personally believe in the foundational teachings that's been planted here. I believe they have, uh, I believe the foundation's right. I believe that you have in you the right birthing process to cause this to come to pass. For that to happen, you need other people also to speak into that fruit, into that seed, so it'll produce also. I'm one of those people. Because I'm not afraid. Uh, never have been. Uh, that's, like I said, sometimes I wish I was a little bit. But it seems to work out better if you're not afraid than what I've seen most people are uh, really afraid. So <clears throat> where, where did we start last night? Do y'all remember? The starting spot. Let me hear y'all say it again. Deuteronomy. Say it one more time. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. Okay, y'all heard yourself say it, so let's go over there. Deuteronomio. That I can do. Spanish I can do. <laughs> Your English thing, I don't know, it changes. Every, you change two states and you got to change the way you talk. <laughs> Holy Ghost, oh, there's my phone. Yeah, I need my steps, you're right. Holy Ghost, I do 10,000 steps a day. Got to, and ha this thing has to clock it because Jody's watching me. <laughs> Accountability is a good thing, but boy, it keeps you nervous sometimes. <laughs> Holy Ghost. No, that's good for you. Checking up on each other, making sure you're not being slackies. Holy. Holy Ghost. Oh, no. Hammer's coming. Y'all should leave. 
Because there's, there, the, the promises of God, all right, are yes and amen. They're not variable. But to get the promises, the conditions are not variable. Hello? Yep. And in y'all's modern life, you feel like, like if we, if we was to all get in a truck and drive from here to Richmond, before we get there, every one of us is going to be mad at the other people driving because they bend the rules. Everybody's bending the rules. If, if we would just do the rules, it would work. Ah. But people are in such a hurry to get to their personal destinations and have their world their way. To do that means you have to impose on my world, and, 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 and I'm not happy about that. But if we would all do the rules, because they've been set up for the protection of every, every individual human. Some of them are not good rules, I agree with you, but most of them are workable, they're doable. If you want to go to God, you got to go down His trail, His way. It don't matter what the world says. They're lying to you. And I'm not willing to go along with you. Okay? I'm not. Lots of reasons. For instance, my son Jody called me today. We were talking over saving the planet. That's what you do when we talk. What's the quickest way to get the planet saved, Dad? All right, I have an answer for you, son. It's called, let's find God. <laughs> and I told him, I said, you heard about that storm coming? He said, I have, Dad. I said, he said, I got services. I got two, three services a day. I cannot be worried with a storm. I said, but we need water. He said, you're right. He said, that's exactly why we buy four-wheel drive, Dad. So we can go anyway. Did you hear? That's my son talking to me. And that means my granddaughter, my daughter-in-law, all these people are involved in a scenario where I said, bring it. We're not going to back away or down. Jesus is king. He will take care of us. He will help us. It don't matter what Pharaoh's doing. It don't matter what demons are doing. It matters who Jesus is. Hello? All right. So let's go to that book that starts with a D. <laughs> Say it again. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. Say it again. Deuteronomy. Say it again. Deuteronomy. 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 Is that right? Yes. That's not right. Well, you know where I'm going, so turn over there. <laughs> it's fifth book, right? <laughs> yeah, fifth book in the Bible. Go there. I can turn to some chapters that you can't pronounce the names, buddy. I can fix all of you. Holy Ghost. So let's look at verse 7. The Lord did not, is this amplified okay? All right. The Lord did not set his love upon you and choose you because you were more in number. So I wanted to bring that up, and I, I missed it last night, so I want to bring it up tonight. Number is a false register of good or bad. That's right. We like numbers. You like that in your checkbook. You like that in, you would like to see this place jam-packed with cars and even police and everything else. But along with some numbers is uh, chaos and problems and worldly systems. And I'm not worth, it isn't worth it. Don't do it. So, I want you to understand, God didn't choose Israel because they was the greatest nation, the most wealthy nation, the most populated nation, the biggest armies. He chose them because he loved them. That's right. Now you need to get that. You feeling alone or lonely because of stands or standards or, or faithfulness or God's 
conditions on us for power and mercy and healing. Live with it. Like it. Put up with it. Or be sick and like that and hush. Can't make your minds up. What you want? Well, I've made my mind up. That's why you're here. Because you, you want to know how to get your hands on what raises the dead. And I'm going to tell you, it is obeying God. Being faithful to God. Because God is faithful to you. It's not opinions of some hostile kid or hostile woman or hostile man. Grandma is mostly right, except when it comes to God. And hopefully your grandma was a godly woman like mine was. My grandma got killed by a drunk on the way home from speaking in tongue for eight hours. It was hard to watch my dad, this soldier, Okinawa veteran, it was hard to watch. I'd never seen him cry in my life. But I watched him on his hands and knees holding on to that casket. He loved his mama. And boy, it made me mad as a young man. What, what would cause, what would bring my daddy to his knees and cause him to be like that? And then, uh, then I got mad at the church, right? Went out and joined the gang and I run into the guy that killed my grandma. How do you think that went? Listen to me. I'm, I'm going to explain mercy to you, not in detail, but in a little bit of detail. I, I'm mad because the church let me down. It offended me. It was a hypocritical bunch in there that got me. My parents were awesome people. My grandparents, great folks. But it was other people that my parents trusted that lied to me. And my parents backed them thinking I was being a normal teenage rebellious person, which is more than likely the percentages are greater than I was. But at that point, I wasn't, okay? And anyway, I got busted. There you go. So it made me mad. I left. I left. I just left them all. Bam. I walked. And hey, you know, you know as well as I do, you get enough of that in a minute. You come home, mama's cooking, it's going to happen. <laughs> you come back. And McDonald's burgers will run out of luster in a minute. Them things ain't no good in the first place. You got to grow your own cow, son. But I'm out there and, and it's this gang and, and we are not good people. These are mad individuals from Vietnam that got ripped off as well. Now we're all out there ripped off for different reasons. But we joined together with the same anger. So that lets you know we had a little power going. Okay? And one day, there you are, we must have been 50 of us sitting around in our muscle cars. Y'all remember those days, some of y'all. Everybody had a fancy muscle car and we we're all out there drinking and carrying on and we don't, we're not paying attention to anybody. Christians came out, we burned, burned we would strip the clothes off of them and burn them right there. Literally, their clothes. Tracks, Bibles, whole thing. Yeah. Got bumpy. For me, it was bumpy. Police would ride out. We'd just laugh at them. Dude, you need to leave. Because we're willing to go there. And they knew we were as long as we was corralled in one spot. You hear me? And, and that's not good. That's evil. That's wrong. But it's how it was at the moment. And then this other gang comes up. You know, we don't care. Who cares, man? We power. We got guns. We got everybody's got two or three guns loaded, ready. Uh, we're not. And we we're not playing. And then I saw this fella. I didn't recognize him. You know, he was he was dressed different. He was so I was noticing him. I was watching him. And then I recognized him. It was the man that killed my grandma that caused that hardship in my family. I, I, I don't know. I know this. We need Jesus. Every one of us in this room, the world system is wrong. 
Because when, when I saw that man, I saw what it, my daddy was on his hands and knees. Do you understand? He's fixed to feel the full blunt of my rage. Do you understand that, right? You also understand that's what hell wants because hell wants me in jail. But because of the potential that's on my life, hell knows it. I don't even know that. Yeah. Say, yeah, that's right. that's right. It's not comfortable. It's not even comfortable to talk about it. And I grabbed hold of that fellow. Y'all, I'm sorry to you. It was not awesome. Uh, I thought I killed a fellow. I was going to jail. But he didn't die. Yeah. And it was my daddy that went up and prayed for the guy. I, I couldn't believe it. I, when I heard that, I got livid. <clears throat> All right. See, I don't understand Christianity, right? I, I'm, I'm not confused. I'm mad. I am in rebellion to the gospel. But you see, my daddy and mama's their faithfulness to God. That, that bothered me, but I couldn't get away from it. It captured me. They captured my wife. My mom and dad did. Now she's a, she's a disciple of my mom. Oh, my. And it went rough for a minute. <laughs> I'm going to have to tell y'all, it was her fault. She shouldn't have got saved. It ain't my fault. <laughs> of course it's my fault. I was following demons. Of course I was. But you listen. They, she went to the right spot. My wife went to the spot where faithfulness could pour into her. And heaven could redeem us. Say it. I want that. Say it. I want that. Say it. I want to be redeemed. Say it. I want to be redeemed. Because I need you not to play games. There, there's people watching your life. Me personally, it's doubtful you'll affect me much now. I just don't believe very many people at all anymore. I believe Jesus. But there's people around you that's watching your life that admire you one reason or another. And you don't need to trip them up. I need you to be true and faithful to the Holy Ghost. Okay? We can do that. Because when that, when, that, when that angel or angel or Jesus, whoever it was, spoke to me on that jet that day, I absolutely talked out loud and said, I will not get born again. Voices speaking to me audibly. And all the people on the jet, y'all know how it is, right? Everybody's in fear of each other, so everybody's quiet like morgues. You know, similar to a church. <laughs> and, uh, and I hear this voice, loud, booming thing. You must be born again. And I just said, what? I will not. But you see, it's the faithfulness of God to my wife, to my mom, to my dad, in, and even me in such a rebellious state. He loves me. While we were yet, something happened. Christ died for us. It wasn't whenever you turn and you're doing good that he recognized you. He spotted you and his love for you in your weakest moment. And that's a true statement. And we need, to, we need to verify that. We need to tell him thank you. Let's go ahead and do that, hey? Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God the Father. Thank you, God the Father. It says right here, and, uh, you, were, you were not many people. That's not why he chose you. For you, the fewest of all people. Uh, what was it? Seventy-something of them started out, went to Egypt. Look. But because the Lord loves you, say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for loving me. It's not works. It's not a group of people's works didn't bring me in. It was God's mercy that run me down and grace hammered me. Boom. And yet we still want to play games. I, that's, why, that's what my problem is. I don't do that. And yet I'm, I'm almost everywhere I go, there's some sort of game being played that tries to force me to bend. I don't want to bend. I want to worship. simple. I want to worship. Why? What's wrong? Why are you possessed with that? Um, I think it says he's worthy. It seems like that's what it says. All right, look, keep going. He loves you because he, he would keep the oath which he had sworn to your fathers. Say, thank you, God, for keeping your oath. Say it. Thank you that your word is true, and you uphold the power of your word. That's what it says. Shakaba. I need you to take it more strict or more serious. All right? Because you see how strict I am. I'm strict. I am. I'm pretty mouthy. I'm aggressive. I'm a lot of things. But there's, there is a road I won't travel. And it's got most of the people on it. It's the easier way. The forbidden fruit. And I can't do it. Because I've been taught not to. And, and it's not right to do so. It says, the Lord has brought you out, of, out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondage. Say thank you for that. The ones of you that have been redeemed, you should be berserk. You should be wild. You should be ecstatic. You should be the most aggressive human the world has ever seen. But instead, we figure out how to let them dominate us. Well, we don't offend them, brother. Yes, I do. <laughs> Hell needs offending. And, it, and it's praise that offends it. It's not us banding together and putting together four or five hundred rules and living strict by the rules. That's not going to impress them. They've seen that for millenniums. And all of it has come to naught. Where are the sons of God? The earth is groaning, waiting on the manifestation of the sons of God. That's us. <laughs> we'll do, Captain. <laughs> yes, sir. Now, I looked up a verse. Let me see if I can find it again. Um, yep. Psalms 105. It's, it's highly likely that I might not get out of this. I'm headed somewhere else, but I might not make it past this. Because this thing here, I like it so much. God went out of his way to deliver. We just did the released you from bondage thing over there in Deuteronomy, or Ronomy, or whatever how you say it. Which is it, Ma? Is it, is it Hominy? I mean, uh, Romany? Huh, me. You need to help me with that. It's bugging me. But you see, I'm not nervous, right? I, I'm sorry to you, but that's your problem. <laughs> I, God seems to know what I want whenever I ask him to raise the dead. So there you go. There's some form of communication that's right. <laughs> so, I would like for you to look at Psalms 105, verse 
25. And I want you to put United States or Germany or Muslim or atheist or Greek Orthodox, bond or free. <laughs> okay. Put it in there. Let's give the Egyptians some slack tonight. Let's blame somebody else. <laughs> All right. It says right here, he turned the hearts of, of the enemies of the Egyptians at that point to do what? What does it say? Read it to me. To hate. Now that's a fairly strong word. All right. God loves you. Okay. Then it stands to reason that he would turn your enemies away from you instead of toward you. Hello? But see, we humans are such that without some kind of pressure, we are going to rebel and go AWOL. So things happen in our worlds. Everybody in this room has a different world. Your world, things are manipulated and managed to force you to worship God. But most people stay in rebellion and even get worse at it instead of submitting. Say yes, that's right. See, God's not going to hurt you. He won't do that. New covenant uh, it, 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 without a shadow of turning is the word of God. He puts none of these evils on you. That's what the Bible says. But <laughs> you can bring them on yourself. Well, brother, it was just in a moment of weakness. Oh, praise the Lord, honey. I understand. Do I? <laughs> You can't do that. No weakness. We are sons of God. And every one of us are weak. Our mind is weak. Our flesh is weak. Our bodies are weak. And we're supposed to be the managing strong points of the universe. But it's not that way. We're off the trail. Come back. Let's come back. Look, look, watch this. It says, he turned uh, the hearts of the Egyptians to hate his people. Look at this. To deal craftily with his servants. Now, let me ask you something. In the United States of America, since that's where our feet are planted at this moment, how's life going for you? <laughs> craftily at best. There are forces and people and evil spirits conniving and, and, and contemplating and planning how to manage you and drive you into the dirt. They're figuring out how to use minute differences in each person to cause you to hate each other. Boy, you can't, you can't buy into that. You, you Stop that. We're exempt from their craftiness. What do you think the power of God's for? So you can have awesome music, which it's great. I like it. I, you know, you saw me. I love it. That's not the purpose of the power of God. The purpose of the power of God is to manage hell off the premises. Together. All right. It's a good thing I'm for you, I can promise you that. Because I can figure this out, how to get you. <laughs> but that's not my job. My job is to figure out how we can win. And I got some of it going my way now. So we, it, it, and we got to understand, first thing first, your enemy is not your friend. Ever. All right. So who's my enemy? No, I love everyone, Brother Hogan. Praise the Lord. Yeah, T, get out the door. Look, if you love Jesus, 
you are not my enemy. If you don't love Jesus, you are my enemy. God's word says. Clearly it says, if God is for me, then who can be against me? God hates evil every day. Does it not say that? Okay. I'm not, I'm not asking you to hate anybody or anything. I'm asking you to love Jesus. And that will take care of itself. I'm here to tell you and warn you, Jesus is king. And you're fraternizing with the enemy, putting up and tolerating his presence is not right. And I, I do not agree with you on that. But, 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 but it's my favorite nephew, but it's my favorite grandson, but it's my, I, I, I'm sorry to you. If that were true, they would follow you. Okay, uh, well, look what he does. Verse 26, he sent Moses. You can count on it. God's got somebody coming to your life to speak God's truth and word to you. It's going to happen. You can throw up blockades and walls because people hate you and have isolated you and and you feel it and you don't like it and so your best response is to throw bigger walls back up at them. No, stop that. Look for the truth. Buy it. The Bible says buy the truth. So how do you pay for the truth? Praise and worship, adoration, long-suffering, meekness, humility, humility, you do not allow hell to run your world. Do you hear me? I said, do you hear me? Amen. I'm right, y'all, about this. And, I, and I'm not going to tell you I got all of this nailed down, but a lot of it is. Now watch. He sent, Mo he sent Moses. God's sending someone into your life to speak the truth to you to guide, to help, to, to manage you with God's power. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. He loves you. Remembered due to whatever it is, Romani. Chapter 7, verse 7, verse 8 says, God loves you. And he's not a truce breaker. He keeps his oath. So we need to keep ours. All right. Then look, what's this? I love this because it's a, it's a definite equation in here. You hearing me? First things first, your enemy's going to hate you. That's to get your attention. Ho! Whoa, whoa. Does anybody else see this ominous tornado five coming at us, tearing everybody apart? Hello. Uh, excuse me? Uh, yeah, we can see him. Well, why eat you up from the supper table and let's at least nail my feet to the ground or something? Do something besides party. <sighs> There's an L5 coming and they hate you. Hell hates you. It's not okay. You're not going to make it. I'm telling y'all, I work Katrina. I know what a Cat 5 looks like. I know what it leaves. Nothing. Fortresses. Banks. Flat. Only thing left was the concrete in the ground, eight feet. Walmart. One of the richest companies in the world. Every building on the Gulf Coast, flat. Nothing left but slabs. Forty 
40,000 ton ships two miles inland. This thing ain't okay, y'all. Right. It ain't okay. Now, you're frightening me. I'm not, I, I, I want you to be frightened, but, but not of your imminent danger. Look for the promise. Listen for his message. And there's a reason why. Because there's a number three here, which is verse 27. Okay, first of all, they figured out that the enemy hated them. Second, they figured out that God sent somebody to warn them and to deliver them. Third, what's number 27? What does it say happened? He sent his signs among them. See, you see me how uncomfortable I am? Uh, I, I, I am one of the most, there ain't any of you, all of you put together. There ain't no way you're as blessed as I am. All of you in one pile. Dude, I am a blessed human. Heaven's running over me and hounding me to bless me and help me and heal me and my people and stuff. Boy, this is awesome. But I need him. Do you understand me? I mean, you got to understand. I see. I see it coming. But there's also signs and wonders coming as well. Don't put your attention on the evil. Put your attention on the good. Jesus is the good. Come on. You, you see how I am. I'm, I'm eat up with this. You see me. I'm, I'm possessed. I'm. Ah. The prophets found me. Y'all don't know about this. I haven't said anything, but the, the prophets found me. Seven prophets so far from seven different nations. And all of them have exactly the same word. And all of them, all of them are awakened at their time zone at three in the morning by an angel of the Lord appearing to them, glowing and talking to them and saying, look, there's a man. You need to fight him. His name is David Hogan. Isn't that awesome? See? You don't know this, and, and it sounds, it gives you too much credit. That's why I don't talk about it a lot, because credit goes to the great Holy Ghost. I'm warning you, anything that happens, the glory belongs to the Father. Now, I assure you, I'm right about this. That's why I dress humbly and, and act like a big old 200-pound redneck. It's just... It's just fun, that's why. <laughs> and, 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 and I'm just comfortable with it. And I do have an education, actually. And I'm using it to let you feel like you're ahead of me. <laughs> and that's okay. Because you, you listen now. I come here on purpose to look you in the face and tell you the truth. Number one, which you've already got figured out how the enemy hates you. You got that figured out. Number two, somebody's, there's a special messenger sent from God. You can call them prophets. You can call them apostles. You can call them teachers, pastors. I don't care what evangelist, who cares what you call them? What you need is the truth. And you need it right in your face. And you need it bright. And the reason why, okay, your eyes are open to the enemy, yay. But you need the truth to blast you because God's trying to get on this planet with miracles. Signs and wonders are trying to blast onto this, onto this thing in this generation. And we want to be a gateway. We want to be a doorway. We want to be a avenue an influence that God can use to let that happen. But we're not going to do it by being little stubborn brats and little puffy mad little twits. Hello? And we're not going to do it by being liberal, let everything go, not heads. 
I'm not confused. But there is a trail we can walk that's fine. It's narrow. And few there be that find it. But we can. We can find it. They do in every generation. We can find it. We can do this. It's doable. <laughs> you hear me or not hear me? You hear me or you don't hear me? All right. I can see I'm not going to make it very far. Look, verse 20. I want this. You understand I want this? I want this. We live amongst the enemy. We are not very many in number. But that's not why we were chosen. It was his great love wherewith he loved us. That's why we're chosen. He sent a spirit amongst us. You know why? So we could believe. He had any, any kind of goodness or greatness or it's him. Yes. It's him. Bam. It's the Father. Okay. All right. You see me possessed with this. <laughs> you know what the prophets are saying? Oh, David, there's some rough stuff coming. I don't want to hear that. I'll have enough rough. I'm already in 16 war zones. I mean, come on. Serious? <sighs> David, there's a third wave of God's power hitting the planet. And here's the word they use, imminent. It's crashing upon us. Now, you can sit in your us four no more world, or you can sit in your liberal world and engage everyone and everybody's okay, and they dog. Or you can find that narrow road where that third wave is running and take a ride. And I'm going to. Do you understand me? Why would God give up my name to all these people I've never met, didn't even know they existed? And they're calling me and confronting me in services, trembling. One of them was the lead pastor at Morning Star uh, over here in uh, North, uh, North and South Carolina, uh, Rick Joyner's place. They, uh, the head, after Bob Jones died, there, there was a, 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 a dueling of, of powers, and there was a, now there's a, a, a main prophet again. God wakes this guy up. Says, you don't know David Hogan, but I do. Now find him. Now, I don't know what you know about church world and don't particularly care much, but you want God helping you in these situations. Because almost every one of these major ministries, the doors are closed to anybody. Hello? Hello? So you want God walking through there. Excuse me, I own this house. Yes. Say it. That's what we want. That's what we want. And, and all of a sudden, I'm on a, my wife and I are on a 40-day fast, and my phone rings because I ain't taking a phone calls or nothing. And uh, she says, look here, David, it's this prophet from, uh, from uh, Morningstar. I said, I don't care who it is, Miss Hogan. He can wait. She said, okay. So they waited. Because there's, there's, there's got to be something in your life that's more important than people liking or hating you. And his name is Jesus. And you need to seek him. Because he can be found, that's why. <laughs> Look here, I went over there. I was interested. You think I'm not interested? I was interested. Because if God's sending seers and, and Moses is, 
are, are appearing in my world, I want to know what they got to say. And I'm not a guy that gets along with prophets. I will call you out. You say you're a prophet? Okay. Let's throw it down because I can raise the dead. What can your God do? And you need to be able to manage me if you're a prophet. Because in the days of old, when the prophet spoke, cities died or lived. Nowadays, they talk to you about getting your tomatoes off the proper, at the proper time. Thus saith the Lord, your tomatoes are going to do great. I will hold back the worms on your behalf. Are you serious? That's what chemicals do. I sprayed my tomatoes. I don't need you. Go home. You ain't getting none of my tomatoes. Are you serious? Ah, oh, so I have this issue, don't I? In my world, you give a witch doctor a black chicken and they'll heal you or prophesy to you. Come up here, y'all give, y'all buy one of their books and they'll prophesy for you. Say we're wrong, say it. There you go. I'm through with that. I don't like that. So, listen to me. I, I told my wife, let's go. I want a piece of this. I mean, these are people who are important. Now, they really are valuable folks now. So I go over there to Moravian Falls. And, uh, you know, that place is packed. Because they know I'm there for a gunfight. I mean it. I'm not going to back down. We're going to do this. Let's go. Hey, do I look afraid to you? <laughs> I get in there, look, they, I, I'm not going to name the names, but I should. Oh, they're important people. Oh, my goodness, it's a bunch of them, too. And, they, and they're very valuable. And I do see their value, honestly. But I just don't like some of the antics that's going on. That's all. It's just not scriptural to me. And so... Uh, I'm sitting there. This is not my fault. I, I, am, I am livid. You see me right now? I was more. I was bounce, more bouncy. I was wanting this. You hear me? I'm trying to provoke, invoke, and cause a scene. <laughs> I want this. I'm growling. I'm spitting fire. <laughs> and... All of a sudden, this fellow right on the front row just jumps up. This is not my fault. I'm over here. He's over there. And I'm looking at him like everybody else is. And he is, he thinks he's in the 70s. Remember in the 70s when the Holy Ghost had fallen on the church? People start bouncing up all over the place. You couldn't control them. They were possessed by God for an instant. I remember those days. That's long gone now. It's mortuary in here now. Can't buy a touch anymore. And this guy, he's going off. I, I looked at my wife, I, and I didn't say it to her, but I did later. I said, I wonder what that guy thought he could get away with being a throwback of the 70s. Jump up in a church and God smack him like that. I wonder who he thinks he is. Well, turns out he was important. <laughs> but I didn't know, y'all. See, see, look, number one, enemies. Say it, we got them, say it. And they're manipulating everybody. There is no cohesiveness. There is no united. There's not. Right at this moment, men are doing what's right in their own minds. And that's not a good time to be in. But we're in it, so let's go for it. So, this guy, he's going, I wish you could see, good, good looking, handsome fella. And I'm, I'm just looking at him. I was, I was busy talking. I was spitting fire everywhere. And all of a sudden, I told, he took off running. I told ushers, capture him. 
So here they go. They got him. They brought him, dragging him back, kicking and bucking and carrying on. I said, what's the matter with you, man? Have you lost your mind? He said, it's not my fault. It's your fault. What are you saying? He said, Brother David, I was listening to everything you said, and then the angel of the Lord appeared beside you. I said, what would you say? And I said, where's he at now? I don't see him. The angel of the Lord appeared right beside you, flaming fire. And he walked over and touched me on the forehead. And when he did, see what? I didn't know who this guy was. I didn't know his history. But his right foot from mid, what is this part called right here? Calf. Mid calf down had been crushed flat. And for four years, he's been in and out of surgeries. They've been putting in screws and nuts and bolts and plates and rods and pins to get him healed so he could walk. And right in service, the angel of the Lord appeared, walked over, touched him, created a new leg on the man. Bam. Now, yeah, that's good. That's awesome. Now, this is in the United States of America. It's not some foreign country in some dirt hut somewhere. So you think you can get away from it. I didn't know who the guy was. Turns out he's third in command of the whole Morning Star outfit. So the next day, I drive from uh, Moravian Falls down to, uh, what's the name of that place where that big church is? Fort something. Fort Mill. I went down to Fort Mill and uh, you know, there, there's the people's waiting on me. I don't know any of them. This place is a big complex. Finally found my way in. There's this fellow managed me, put me in this slot. Right there it was uh, uh, Ms. Joyner's place. I parked in her spot. Get out, walk in there. Rick Joyner's sitting there waiting on me. Hello, David. What'd you tear up my, my house for? I said, I probably did. And it is what probably need, uh, necessary. He said, have a seat. We got to talk. He said, I need some answers. I said, I have some. Now, you have to understand, I'm wild. I ride a horse to church. I'm a hillbilly preacher. Uh, but the angels of the Lord are manifesting all over the place. The, the, the prophets of God are being awakened all over the world. It's on, on our behalf. I cannot let you drop your gaze. I cannot allow you to be distracted. And the man that got healed was standing there. And Brother Rick says, this is our friend. We've been working with this guy for four years. I didn't even know the story. The man himself told me. Thank you, David. And he just stuck a microphone in my hand and said, bring it. I said, all right. I told you, I'm on fire. The, the, what's going on uh, is necessary. The evil that's happening, it's uncomfortable. I'm sorry. I, I mean that. I, I don't like it either. I don't. Right now, my son-in-law, Sean, is driving through a war zone. Right now, my son, Jody's driving through a war zone. Y'all don't know anything about any of that stuff. But what am I doing? Am I distracted by it? Look at me. No, I'm on a mission. Truth needs to be let free. Fire needs to fall. Holiness needs to be uplifted and, and sought after. Power of God needs to be embraced. It's truth. The question is, these great people that are around in Christianity... How are you going to impress them 
when they're the best speakers, orators, they have the best education, educational systems, the most money. They, there, there's only one way. That's through the Holy Ghost fire, the power of the gospel. And yes, we do need those men on fire. Say yes. yes. We do. We need every one of us to be on fire. All right. Let's keep going. Can I go, keep going or have I, have I overdone my stay? You all right? Oh, it's early. <laughs> Y'all good? How about you, Miss Hogan? You all right? You sure? Okay, you look nice in your new skirts and stuff. You're welcome. You got to throw in them plugs when you get a chance. That's what good husbands do. <laughs> Holy Ghost. <laughs> Look what it is. He's, they showed his signs among them. Amongst who? Who is this amongst them? Who is this them? It's not the children. It's the enemy. Listen, the power of God has so been, for the last, I don't know, 50, 75 years, the power of God, for the most part, is introverted in the church. God wants it out. God wants it out. The signs are for the unbelievers. It's for the enemy. They, how do you think they're going to repent? If they don't see the power of God. They got money. They got education. They got things that ma they do matter actually. Because my Bible says that money answers all things. But the way you overcome evil is with. All right. All right. Good is exemplifying Jesus' power to a dying world. All right. They, Moses and Aaron, whom he had chosen, showed signs among them, wonders and miracles in the land of Ham or Egypt. He sent thick darkness. Y'all know all these things, right? In verse 29, he turned Egypt's water to blood, caused the fish to die. 30, uh, 30, the land brought forth frogs in abundance in the chambers even of the kings. 31, he spoke. And there came swarms of beetles and flies and mosquitoes and lice and all their borders. Listen, we have help. You have help. God loves you. We recognize the enemy hates us. Okay, we got that sorted. But we need our prophets. We need our apostles. We need our men of God to stand and our women of Zion to shine brightly in an evil environment. But all of us are distracted with our own personal worlds and circumstances. Praise the Lord, Brother Hogan. I need help. Praise God. I love Jesus. Praise God. Oh, I need help. Praise the Lord. I love Jesus, praise God. Dude, you know how to talk Christianity. Your trouble is not talking Christianity. It's actually walking it out. You can speak church. I need you to walk godliness. I'm not against you. Because in your world, as soon as I said that, your, your immediate response, I'm not that bad, Brother Hogan. I never said you was bad. Because if I thought you were bad, you'd be what I call an enemy. And then we would have trouble. We're on the same side of the fence. We're in the same camp. His name is Jesus. Hello? His name is Jesus. And we need to help each other. 
We need, we need our, our eyes of our understanding enlightened and refreshed. Yes. Say yes about that. Yes. I do too. I want more. woo And I'm going to get it because I am pursuing him aggressively. Something's wrong with me, right? He spoke and the swarms came, beetles, flies, mosquitoes, and all their borders. He gave them hail for rain, lightning like flaming fire in their land. Have you looked around the planet? What's going on with all the different kinds of weather and storms and floods and droughts and pestilences? You need to wake up. Wake up. You've got help. And it's in the form of God. Holy, holy. All right. He smote their vines also in their fig trees, 33, and broke the ice-laden trees of their borders. He spoke and locusts came, grasshoppers without number. Wow, that's a lot. That's a lot of creatures. I've seen them. My brothers believe, the Indians believe, that the actual, when the wind blows in the Gulf of Mexico, the water droplets in the, in the, uh, of the ocean turn into grasshoppers. And that's where the swarms come from. The, the ocean produces them. They believe that. They, it's in their history, in the, in, in the Aztec history. And you don't even know that sort of stuff anymore. You've lost it all. And so we've got to be refreshed and enlightened. Our eyes need to be bright again. Sons of God, daughters of Zion. Because I am not demeaning your circumstances because they are harsh. Many of us have hard environment. But I'm here to rescue you. I've been sent because I've got life jackets for everybody. And there's a ship waiting on us that cannot be sunk <laughs> or sank or whatever. Sunk. <laughs> all right, look. They ate up all the vegetation, verse 35, and devoured through the ground. 36, smote all the firstborn. Horrible, horrible events. Beginning and chief substance of their, all their strength. God will break the strength of your enemies. But you have to submit to his conditions. You're not allowed the privilege to have an opinion. Jesus is king. And nowadays, everybody's got an opinion on everything. And if you don't know, you just pick up your, your smartphone and ask Siri. And she gives you your opinion. Say, so, yeah, we got that figured out. Say it. <laughs> Who do you think's running Siri? It's these crafty enemies of yours. Come on, wake up. <sighs> All right. Uh, look, look at this. I want, you, I want you to look at this. I like this. Verse 37. Uh, boy, you, this is gold. Say, I want verse 37. Say it. I want, verse I want it and I'm having it. As for me and my house, what? We serve the Lord. I'm having verse 37. Here's what it says. He brought forth Israel also with silver and gold. And there was not one feeble person amongst their tribes. Thank him. Thank him right now. Thank you, God. Thank you for the silver and gold of my enemy. Say it. And thank you that we can be redeemed in our health as well. You look at me, y'all. I am 65 and I'm not hurt anywhere. Don't say, Brother Hogan, listen. 
Are you serious? You believe in witchcraft? Are you serious? You superstitious? Mm. That was a hold your tongue thing because it was trying to get out. <laughs> Say it. Thank you, God, for delivering me. Thank you, God, for bringing me forth with the silver and gold of my enemies. Say it. Thank you, God, that none of us will be feeble. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We are redeemed from the curse of the law. Because we are faithful in the land. It doesn't matter what the enemy's doing. It doesn't matter what the, anybody else is doing. Don't you see? Don't you see I'm blessed? I'm blessed. And it doesn't matter how you receive me. It's not going to affect that. That's a good feeling. It's because God found me. Mad, disappointed, broken. I, I couldn't get over it. I, I didn't want to be that way. But hell, the craftiness of my enemy. So God came to me himself. You will get born again, boy. And I said, I'm, I'm talking about on the jet out loud. I will not get born again. Now y'all leave it alone. I was thinking it was the, 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 the pilot preaching on that thing. I'm serious. Man, you're a little dense, Maybe. But I was a guy with a gun, you understand? So I don't know what to say to you. <laughs> Dance or not, I had the firepower. <laughs> there you go. And I was determined that, this, that I wasn't going to be ripped off again. And now, 40 years later, I'm more determined than ever. And I, I know you can see it on me. And I'm trying not to overrun you too harshly. I'm trying to get you to allow your eyes because of the hurt and the pain and the, the sorting of the craftiness of our enemies has, has got us and affected us all. And we need to be redeemed. We need renewing, refreshing. Say it. I need that. I need, that. I need renewing. I need, I need refreshing. Help me, God. Help me, God. In Jesus' name. Shalabaka pata. You still with me? <laughs> I want you to look at verse 38. There's a phrase. See, your enemies should be so elated when they get rid of you. You should be such a thorn in their side with the power of God, the holiness of God, the worship of King Jesus, the attributes that's upon us of praise and thanksgiving and gratitude. That there, whenever you walk off, they go... Thank you, God. I'm rid of them. It, it says right here in my thing, it says, Egypt was glad when they departed. Now, this land is ravished. There's nothing left. Their, their, their firstborn are still dead in their arms. But the most important thing is they got rid of that plague called the children of God. This is who you are and you will man up. You hear me? We will be a plague to our enemies. They will regret the day they enslaved us. 
and not by any power of ourselves, but because of the mercy that's upon our lives. Yes. Do you hear me? If, if I can get you to do half of what I'm saying, <laughs> we'll do well. <laughs> but I'm not, I, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do this. You understand that, right? I'm going to brandish my sword. I just look at my enemies. I'm telling you, I, I, I get to talk to some young people sometimes, and I like to scare them. Amen. I do. I tell them, I get up every morning, I pull my war sword off the thing, and I get my stone, and I'm looking at my enemies. Sharpening it. And I look to my left, as far as you can see over the horizon, is the army of hell. And in front of me is the army of hell. To my right is the army of, and I'm sitting there sharpening my thing. And then when I, I tell you, <laughs> and then I'm ready, I'm suited out. And I walk out in the battlefield. And you feel alone almost always. Which is not a true thing, but that's, that's what hell wants you, the craftiness wants you to feel that way. And I tell them, which one of y'all is a commander? Because you're the first one to go. <laughs> and, I, and it's thousands upon thousands of enemies, and you look them right in the eyes, and you just tell them these words. You don't think much of me, or you would have brought more. <laughs> <laughs> Now let's do this. <laughs> do you hear me, right? You can, you can sit there and think it's a joke. It ain't no joke, son. Because I'm dangerous to the enemies of my king. Say it. Me too. Say it. Me too. I am a son of God. Say it. I, am a son of God. I have been bought by the blood covenant. Say it. I've been redeemed. Say it. Redeemed. Ah, let me do uh, 10 minutes till 9. Uh, <laughs> okay, there's lots of people responding to my thing. Let me look this up. Hang on just a second. Oh, yes. There it is. I need you to go with me to Proverbs. Uh, I'll do it on this one. Put that thing up, Ma. It'll keep talking to me if you don't put it in this little bag. Look, I need you. We got to do this. And, and there's ways to go about it. And, and uh, you're comfortable with losing. That's your business. Just get a big old marker and put an L up there. And we, we'll all understand what you want. But that's not for me. I am a son of God. Do you understand? Do you understand? Okay. All right. Y'all in Proverbs yet? Uh, Proverbs 13 verse, uh, we'll start with 11. Is that all right? Give me a couple of minutes to do a little bit of proverbial pro Proverbs uh, wisdom stuff. Holy Ghost. You see, I'm not telling a whole lot of miracles, right? You see, you notice that? I decided to talk a little bit to you, teach, so there's a reason for it. There's a couple of good ones I want to talk about, but I would, I'm going to do this for a minute, all right? Number 11, wealth not earned. This is amplified as well. Wealth not earned, but one in haste or unjustly or from... From the production of things for vain or detrimental use, such riches will dwindle away. You know, y'all need to look up, you need to ask Siri, not right now, but you need, to, uh, you need to find out how many people who win these lotteries, what happens to them after two and a half years? I need you to look that up for yourself. Because you believe, 
if somebody will run over me and I don't die, I can sue them in these big insurance companies. I can get hasty, I get hasty millions out of it. You need, to, you, need to do, you need to do a study on that before you go and hurt yourself. <laughs> over something foolish. I, I need you to calm down. It's not money that's going to fix you. It's Jesus that's going to fix you. Now, wealth keeps you in hamburgers and such. There's a man. Uh, God spoke to me some time back, 29 years ago, or 30. And I'm in prayer. I was in, uh, it was... Uh, I don't know, several hours of prayer, and the Holy Ghost spoke to me to go out to the garbage dump. Well, who wants to go to the dead gummit garbage dump? None of us. I'm telling you, there's none of you that want to go out to the garbage dump. You want somebody to come get your garbage and tote it to the dump. Say yes. yes. And you're going to pay them a healthy amount of money every month to make that happen. Okay. So I told my wife, I think God wants me to go to the garbage dump. She said, why? I said, I don't know. We, maybe I should reconsider that. She didn't say nothing. She took off. Next thing I know, she's got a clothes basket. You women are, I don't know, y'all are that, whatever it is. And it's full of my stuff. It's got clothes and food. And I said to her, you moving? She said, no. You're going to the garbage dump and we're going to give them the best. I said, that's my nice shirts in there. I said, uh, you think you have rights to my junk? She said, we're one. That, what's yours is mine and what's mine is mine. <laughs> see, see that hand? Yeah. You see that head, right? <laughs> she, she believes that. <laughs> and you know what? I let her. I, I'm telling you, as much awesome as, as our, how awesome our relationship is and how strong we are together and how much we love each other and all of these things. You hear me? I, I don't care. It, she can do what she wants. It's okay. Help the poor, you're helping God. My Bible says, he who helps the poor, God will repay to their face. That's what the Bible says. So this hasty wealth thing is not right. Leave it alone. Don't pursue it. Little by little, slow by slow, steady by steady, stable, faithful, diligent. That's what gets you there. You hearing me? So I get in my fancy little Americano truck and I drive out to the garbage dump. I'm smelling pretty good. I had a bath before I left. Soon as I open that door, you have any idea what happened? About 300 of these nasty black flies just swarmed into my awesome smelling world. I said to myself, self, we should reconsider. And then I stepped out onto the ground and the ooze and the goo of, yeah. of the sludge of garbage got on my boots. And I'm not one of those people that's, I'm all right with that. Hard, hard as boots are to come by, you're supposed to take care of them things, not get junk on them. People started coming, and I asked them, where do y'all live? Here. We live here. I said, wait a minute. This is the garbage dump. Yeah, we know. This is our home. All right. Things just changed. Didn't they? Sure did. Now, because there was lots of them. A few hundred folks there. And they're living underneath viscoline or plastic things and tore up and eating somebody else's thrown away food, which ain't very much. 
nasty. Every one of them sick, incurable. All of them, all of them. The smell, I'm about to vomit, you know. My shower is gone. The environment stole my shower. I said, God, I might have dragged my feet just a little bit, but I'm out here. Why? What am I doing here? Because any one of those people could be the reason, or all of them. Am I supposed to pile them all up in my truck, take them home now, take care of them for the rest of my life? That's how I feel. I feel like doing that. Just, just put my eyes on them one half a minute. I felt like I should take them with me, all of them. Should have seen those babies. Filth. So I got out. She'd give me two or three baskets of things, so I got them out. My, you know, you understand the fight that ensued, right? Of course, they're going to fight. They are going to fight over this. I didn't have enough for everybody. That was a mistake. See, you don't, you just, because you're so blessed, you don't get it. And so they took, I just, I just took all of it and set it out there and just let them do whatever they're going to do. They didn't even give me my baskets back. All right. So I'm walking around. I'm trying to figure out, all right, God. Need is way over my head. I can't do this. This is way more than I got money. All right. You knew that. Why am I here? And I'm looking around. I'm looking around, looking around. And I saw this guy sitting. He never even got up. Sitting in a half tore up old cardboard box. That was his house. Sitting right beside him is a woman. Their head is down between their legs. They never even looked up at me. So I walk over to him, excuse me. He said, don't bother me. I said, uh, uh, I'm going to bother you. I want to help you. And I put my hand out. He, would, he wouldn't do it. I said, give me a hand. He said, I'm not going to do it. He said, I've made some horrible mistakes. This is just reward and fruit for what I've done. I said, maybe. But you don't understand the great Holy Ghost that made this planet talked to me a while ago and sent me out here and I see readily that you're the guy. I've come here to save you. And he raised up, your, the look on his face, I, I, I thought he was going to stab me. I'm serious. I, he said, I am too far. I said, you're right. Hell has convinced you of that. I got some new words for you. God wants to make a son out of you. He said, I'm not worthy. I said, you're right on that account as well. No one is. It's mercy that makes us worthy. It's the grace of God that makes us available to be a partaker of the inheritance of the saints of light. You're right about that, sir. And he stood up. Tears started running down his face. His wife, the same. He said, I'm from a village. I said, I can tell that. Let's go home. Because I could speak his language. I could speak his Spanish and his Indian. I said, you need to let me help you. You need to trust me. I said, I understand it's probably hard because I'm white. That's, that's number one against me is the color of my skin. Because anybody that's the color of my skin have gone out there, they've made horrendous mistakes, ripped off people, pillaged, raped, stolen, all in the name of colonization, whereas me and God say it's murder. Is that clear to you? You clear? All right. I've seen it firsthand, so you, don't give me no, let's talk about some other subject. I'll have to hold my tongue. So, I took this guy, his wife, 
started tutoring him. Took him back to his village. He got his, uh, got his parcel of land back. It's Reuben. You know Reuben. This story is Reuben. And you know him now, who he is. See, he met him, but, but 20-something years later, now he runs 300 of our churches. <laughs> now he has four businesses, four block homes. I don't know how many vehicles he's got. I gave him nothing except this. I gave him a hand up out of the mire. Thank you, you listen to me. The slow, tedious walk is the right walk. I need you to slow down, back up, take a breath, and recalibrate. Can you do that for me, please? Please? All right. Watch what this said. Uh, it's detrimental to use of dwindle away. But he who gathers, what's this terminology? Little by little. See there? He who gathers little by little. Instead of waiting on that, oh, the big day's coming. Ah, oh, it's coming. It's coming. I'm just going to throw myself to the wind. <sighs> Come on, that's foolishness. Stop that. Put your feet on the ground. Live within your means, get out of debt, and walk this thing out. We can do this. All of us can. We are sons of God. We got this. All right, let's get moving. Here we go. Look at verse 12. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but when the desired is fulfilled, do you know what it's like to be healed? Any of y'all? I was, I died twice. I had seven incurables. God healed me of all seven plus raised me from the dead. And everybody wants me calm down. Listen, do you understand what the tree of life is? <laughs> I've been shot. I got back to Ms. Hogan. The whole side of my head blowed apart. Blood running everywhere. I am hurt. She takes me, brings me in the house. Shalabataba starts praying for me. And look at me now. See, see, you have to understand. Uh, one day I had what's called, uh, what's that uh, where your heart blows up? But, uh, congestive heart failure. I had doctors and nurses in the house. When, it, when my system blew. But look now. I got bit by three deadly snakes so far. And one of them, my system went into failure. I had a stroke. See, y'all don't know all of this. Life is going to happen to you. That's why you need Jesus. Hope deferred. Hope is that I don't ever be sick. Hope is that I don't get shot going to church. Hope is that I don't get snake bit. But you know what I found out about snakes? You go in there laying, they're going to bite you. Day before yesterday, uh, three days ago, I was out here on y'all's trail. I run into a bear. You know why? I was on his land. He gonna come see why I'm out there. What's the matter with you? <laughs> That's what he's supposed to do. I was hoping. I told my wife, "Boy, I hope I don't see no bear." She said, "You're going into bear country." I know. And I just kept walking. Odds are pretty high you're going to see a bear if you go into bear country. You walk amongst the, the cobras, you're going to probably get bit. Love is going to happen to us. But I need you to understand 
Whenever you get your way, though, it's like finding the tree of life. <laughs> but most of us live in a deferred, sick world, and I can't let you live in there no more. I need you to encounter the tree of life. Why has so much happened to me and I'm still alive and healthy? You, do you have an answer for that? You know what the doctors tell me? They, the, the, these people that come, they look at me, they, they observe me, they, they study me like I'm an animal. And here's what they say to me. You ain't right. There's something, something about you that ain't right. And I look at them, thank you. Because they write about that. Whoever despises the word, verse 13, and counsel of God brings destruction upon himself. You can throw what I'm saying to the wind. I will let you. But you can't blame it on anybody but yourself. We need to take responsibility for our actions. Hello? I was, a few months ago, I was down in Central America, and I'm, I got caught up in this drug thing. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. You go in the snake pit, you're going to get bit. You get into bear country, the bear's going to find you. You go into a drug lord's area, what's going to happen? <laughs> We're there to preach the gospel. It's not my fault. I have to preach the gospel. This, this, all of a sudden, this hooker comes up. I'm sorry to y'all. Y'all don't like talking about such things. You don't even allow them in your church. Listen to me. This woman had hardly any clothes on. I'm telling you, it, it was uncomfortable. And we're in broad daylight public. And she comes walking up and put, gets herself on her knees and grabs me on my pants leg. I said, look here, woman. I'm going to knock you out. You let go of me. You don't have that right. Somebody puts that on a smartphone and it goes out on the Internet. You know, you, you can't help it. You know, you're not going to believe me. You're going to believe what you saw. I'm there preaching the gospel and a hooker comes up. Am I responsible for that? Yes. I went there. I had no idea what she was doing. But I know she's dressed for work. And I don't need her close to me. The only person that will ever believe me is sitting right there. And I said, look, lady, you got to let go of me. I, I'm, I can't let that happen. I cannot allow this. So she left. In a minute, she comes back with this twisted, tore up, Y'all call them drug children. Because when these women get pregnant with all those drugs in their system, it, it deforms the child. And so this baby is really wrecked. And she lays that baby down on my boots. Now she's still dressed for work. I reach and pick the child up because it's not the baby's fault. You understand that? Let me just go on record. She, you can get your footage and you can abuse me every how you want to. God will redeem me. He will vindicate me. I'll be fine. Thank you. Here's how it went. I'm holding this child. Next thing you know, that little boy starts beating on me. And I threw him on the ground. I don't do uh, spoiled kids. Let me say that one more time. I don't do that. You might, well, they got to develop who they are. Yeah, they're going to develop into demons because they're full of the devil when they come. Excuse me? Okay, so. Okay, so. But Siri will tell you something else. So, uh, so I'm sitting there, right? And this little kid, I had no idea. That's the first time he ever walked in his life. 
And when that little boy got healed, six hookers are at my feet weeping. And they're telling me, we want your Jesus. Now, I said, okay. So I pray with them, right? That's what you do, right? Say yes. yes. I know you don't do it, but I, I do. <laughs> All right. So I prayed with these ladies. They're, they're just, they just made bad decisions and misguided. I, I, I do not condone anything they do at all. You know I don't. But some of them haven't had the chance you've had. They may have done better if they'd been given the same opportunities you, you, you've been given. Think about it, okay? I am not cursing you. I bless you. But you need, before you curse them, you need to hear me. And so... Uh, all of a sudden, this dude comes rolling up on me. And I know him. I know these people. They're the same worldwide. He, he is the cartel boss for this area. He's got two 45s in his back. He's tatted up, bald-headed. He's rolling up on me. It's happening. And he's got the look and the walk. Here he comes. And I thought, oh, boy, here we go. Y'all's Christianity is love him into the kingdom, brother. Praise the Lord. So how are you going to love at 45? <laughs> I need an answer for that. I need a little help with this. I, I don't have love for that 45. I, I've been on the receiving end of them things. That, that ain't awesome. It ain't awesome. He is evil. He is my enemy. And he rolls up on me. He said, you crazy. I said, maybe. These are my girls. I said, not anymore, son. They're my daughters now. We are sons and daughters of Zion together. You lost your rights. Now look, I was expecting him to pull that 45 on me. You know what he said to me? I thought you might tell me that. <laughs> he said, I want your God. I said, thank you, Jesus. So he got born again. Say that's good. Say it. Good for me. It was pretty nice. The whole thing, the whole environment changed. We kicked all the drugs out. The women stay home moms and so forth and so on, blah, blah, blah. Good. There you go. Now all you got to do is educate everybody. That means you got to put money into them, feed them, and oh, it's endless. Okay? <laughs> it's a true statement. All right. Whoever despises the word and counsel of God brings destruction upon himself. But he who reverently fears and respects the commandment is rewarded. See, all of y'all are taught, blab it, grab it, name it, claim it, throw out a couple of verses, get a few by memory and spit them out into the world, out into the atmosphere and the atmosphere will bow to you. That's not true. You actually have to fear the Lord. You actually have to submit to the conditions. You actually have to find a way to worship God in every circumstance. Excuse me? Excuse me. All right. And I'm here again. I am not here to rail and belittle you. I want you to understand this is a trail of righteousness that will bring us to healthy environment of God's power. Okay? You confused? You all right? Okay, all right, Mom. You okay? All right. Verse 14, the teaching of the wise is a fountain of life the, that, that one may avoid the snares of death. Say it with me, snares of death? Snares of death. Out. Out. In Jesus' name. 15, good understanding wins favor. Say it, I want that. I want that. Favor, come to me. favor come to me. For that to happen, we need understanding. We need understanding, we need to understand God, His way. That will bring favor to us. Y'all don't know this. That's another thing I have kept quiet about. <coughs> but a few months ago now, or weeks uh, the Pentagon, your Pentagon, called my office in South Texas and I was there fasting. 
and they got Ms. Hogan at 12 o'clock at night. And Ms. Hogan says, it's the Pentagon, David. I said, I don't believe that. Man, hang that phone up. It was. Seven o'clock in the morning, I'm up, I'm up praying again. Phone rings. Four-star generals on the line wanting to talk. Set up at 10 o'clock. Here's what they said to me. I finally, because I didn't believe it. I mean, how many of us normal people get a call from the Pentagon? Nobody. You don't know anybody. You do now. You know, you know what they said to me? This is a four-star general who works directly under the, 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 the Army, uh, what they call them, Joint Chief, who works under the Secretary of Defense, under the President. This isn't very far. This is pretty powerful. You know what this lady said to me? How can we save America, Brother David? There you go. They're searching. You hear me? We need to let them find us. And when they do find us, we need to have something to say. I said, I do have something to say to you, ma'am. Let me just put a, go on record. I, they're, they're recording everything, right? I said, here's how it goes for you. Number one, your power or giftings or intellect did not bring you to this situation. Your family's money and political power did not put you there. Your political party did not put you there. God Almighty put you there. Amen. Let's just go on record about this. She said, okay, David. What do I do right now? I said, okay. As soon as we hang up, go down through the Joint Chiefs offices, getting all the generals and admirals you can find, and lay on the carpet and call on the mighty God of heaven to save America. Yes. That's what you do. You fast and you pray and you ask God for mercy. That's what you do. Y'all catching on yet how this is going? See, there's lots of stuff going on. And I need you to awaken, awaken out of the slumber and the stupor. Because the currents of this world has infiltrated the church. And we need to be redeemed from the curse of the law. Shakaba. That's a true statement. Ready? Let, let me finish this. All right. Look what this says. Good understanding wins favor, but the way of the transgressor is hard. Say, I don't want that. I do not want the way of the transgressor. It's hard. I don't want that. Say it again. I don't want that. Look what it says. Like the barren dry soil or the impassable swamp. Now look, I'm from Louisiana. I can get through that swamp. You can't. You understand me? I learned how from a child to manage those swamps, the quicksand, the alligators, the bear, all the things that's out there, the cottonmouths. Oh boy, oh boy, have I caught a lot of those things. I learned how to manage these swamps, but I take you from your environment, put you there, you're dying. It's gonna happen. So I need you to understand that that's the way of the transgressor. It's an impossible scenario. We don't wanna go there. Say it, I'm not going there. I'm not going to do it. Say it. I am going to follow the Holy Ghost. Say it. In Jesus' name. Verse 16. Every prudent man deals with knowledge. I'm here. I'm offloading knowledge to you. I'm encouraging you. There's some great events happening around. Of course there's evil. I know that. Don't. Da, da, da. That's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about Jesus. He's awesome. You hear me? Yes. He is awesome. We deal with the knowledge of God. That's what we deal with. Say yes. Yes. All right. But a self-confident fool. How many of them you know? Step out the door and just look either direction. 
Look what this says. A self-confident fool exposes and flaunts his folly. You can't talk to them. They know everything. Ah, oh, stupid Christians. Oh, dummy. Blah, 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 blah. And the next thing you know, they're in a ditch somewhere upside down. And you happen to be the one that comes along, pulls them out, and saves their life. Say yes. yes. That's what knowledge does. It helps the fool. Saves their lives. Shaka la ba 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 shata ba. My son Jody and I, we're on a trip. We're not, you know, when you're on a trip, you're not thinking about raising the dead. I'm sorry. <laughs> and we're on a trip. We got to get, we got to go in front of the government the next day. Uh, something to do with our visas come up before the government. They called my whole family in. So we're rolling up to Mexico City. Get it fixed. Sean Williamson's tire blew off his truck. We was rolling too. I look in the mirror and it's just sparks. That's not what you want to see. But nothing happened to the kids. So we're waiting. I got the whole family. We're off on, a, on the side over there because you stay in a pile. Do you understand? I said, do you understand? Yes, okay. You're stronger, bigger. Any bear will tell you that. <laughs> and so... Uh, we're just sitting there. I'm waiting there because got, I got mechanics with me and they're working on it, getting it fixed and blah, 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 you know. I'm sorry it happened. I'm, I'm apologizing to my wife. It shouldn't be about an hour. Here, have a nice cold soda or some fruit drink or something here. It, it, we'll get going in a minute. Just, just praise God and hush. And I'm out here on the perimeter, right, watching because the bear is coming. Do you understand me? I said, do you understand me? You in bear country, what you going to encounter? Bear. You in snake country, what you going to encounter? Bear. There you go. They coming. And, and, and as big a group as we were, they want us. They coming. Next thing you know, it was like, I don't know, the most awful, scary, this bus full of pedestrians backs out into an interstate gets T-boned at about 80 miles an hour. Say, I'm glad I wasn't there. Say that. You're right about that. Because we heard the noise, we looked. You know how everything goes in that slow motion deal? It really does. They just, time just slows for you somehow. And I'm looking, this bus is got hit and is starting to roll and it's full of people. The car that hit them is in the air going over the top, turning. Hit the ground. I looked at Jody, come on. See, this is who we are. We are saviors of people. Most of you are afraid to get involved because you had to lawyer up. Hello? You've been petrified by these horror stories. Well, what about God sending his only begotten son to give us complete liberty, no cap, no, everything is possible. I roll over to that car and I look in there, the, the blood and guts. It, it, was, it was awful. Couple beautiful people, but they are gutted. Jody looked at me. He threw up. He's, and I'm wanting to, but I can't. I got to be the strong one. And I stuck my head in there. That, that fresh blood smell. That, these people are kids to me. I don't know why they made that mistake or how it happened. Or I didn't look for drugs or booze. How can I help these people? And I'm just fixed to put my hands into that meat grinder. And somebody screamed at me, don't touch him, gringo. And I turned around, why not? You know the law. You touch him, you'll get the blame for him if he dies. I said, he's dead already. And they come and there were some people and they checked him. Both of them are dead. 
And they said, what were you going to do? I said, I raised the dead. Now, this is a fresh kill. <laughs> There's blood. You know, all the windows are gone. There's rips and tears. There's blood everywhere. I mean, listen, they're in the, part of that car don't have blood on it. I, I, I'm not messing with the bus. I'm messing with the car. That's where I'm at. You hear me? And I'm in there. I'm inside the thing. It's smushed. And I'm in there with my knife cutting the seatbelt off these people. I'm going to pull them out. And they said, we've heard of you. Pray for those people. I said, I'll do it. See, that's the right testimony. Say, yes, it is. Yes, this is the testimony we want. Say it. This is how people need to perceive us. Fearless, courageous. Jody and I, you ask him when he gets here. Ask him about that. Oh, it scared the fire out of him. He, I said, get in the car, boy. So me and him are stuck in the car. Our heads are butting each other. And we're not touching those people, but we're right over them, you know, hovering. Speaking in tongues, sure. I mean, blood is, I'm telling you, it was gory. All of a sudden, I have no explanation to you. They went together. I watched them get healed. Wow. You, need, you need to get Jody's, Jody's version. Because he pulled out of there. He looked at me. He said, you are crazy, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but we got them back. We got those kids back. Say, that's awesome. Say it. Because it is. Why? I don't have a clue. How? I don't know. I don't know those answers. I know this. Can I read it to you? All right. A wicked me messenger falls into evil, but a faithful ambassador brings healing. Don't it? That's who we are. Say it. I am one of those. Say it. That's who we are, okay? You hear me? We are faithful ambassadors of the great gospel. Say it. Everybody asks me, how do you get so many people raised from dead? Well, when you get them two by two, they get numbers go up quicker. Say it. I want that. Say it. I want that. You see why I'm excited? You see it, right? I mean, when you see that stuff, you, your mind knows it's not legal. It, that's not legal. That is not legal. In our world that we live in, there are rules and natural law, and it, and it is, it has a grip on us, and it's real, Right? But there's another law, God's law. And somehow you can get it. You need to ask Jody because it still freaks him out about it. I was impressed. You see me impressed? I, I don't know how. There was so much blood, there's no way for them to be alive. There, there was so many body parts, there, there, there's no way. There was bones, I saw them. And all of a sudden, these people come climbing out of that car. I'm just going like this. Everybody else, I mean, all the Mexicans, we're all backing up from them. I told Jody, get them something to drink. He said, nope. So you think you, you think you can capture the moment. No, that's too big. That's illegal. The tree of life is illegal. It breaks the rules. Say it. I want that. 
I want that. Jesus, God, let us walk in it, live in it, believe in it. In Jesus' name. Will you stand up, please? Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. You all right? I'm all right. You all right? Oh, me, I'm great. Uh, buddy, I got some adrenaline pumping over here. <laughs> Gracias, hermana. Man, you're all ready, ain't you? Man. Let us worship. Can we do that? Holy Ghost and fire. We need you, God. We need you, God the Father. Holy Ghost, we asked you for healing. We want to be ambassadors of healing. We want to be sons who bring healing. In Jesus' name. You see, I come to teach these. Did you notice that? Is it okay? Yes, sir. You sure? Yes. All right. See, she said yes, sir. That's how my wife talks to me, so I understand that. Yes, sir. Some of that other stuff, I don't get it. That's right. Holy Ghost, I bless you. I bless your homes. Do you hear me? Two dead kids got up from the dead. Now, they were mutilated a little bit. Mm-hmm. It was rough. I heard a grown man's appetite. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you. Say it. I want that. Say it. I now, I need some refreshing in here. What do you say? Amen. I need some renewal in here. What do you say? There are times of refreshing. Acts chapter 3. I want that. I want to be refreshed and renewed and rekindled, refired. I want to be reborn again, 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 again. (laughs) Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. I really like it, y'all. I don't know. It just happens to me. I find stuff. I don't know. It just happens. It comes to me somehow. Just worship him. Come on. Worship Jesus. If you're in here now and you don't know Jesus, I want to invite you to come up here. And we're going to pray with you. We're going to introduce you to Jesus. If you don't know Jesus or if you're backslidden your spirit, I'd like for you to come up here. We're going to pray with you in Jesus' name. Don't be ashamed or afraid. Let's allow the great Holy Ghost fire to touch us here. Can we do that? If you don't know Jesus, come. Or if you knew him and something knocked you off the trail, we're here to help you find that trail again. In the name of Jesus, come on, great Holy Ghost fire. If you got sickness in your body, I'd like for you to come up here as well. And also, if you want re- refreshing, you want fresh touch, come up here. Let's make some lines. And we'll just, I'll pray for some, some, some of the folks. I might not get everybody, but I'll get most. Because it's time for us to let the refreshing touch us. So we can be refired by the Holy Ghost, the goodness of God in Jesus' name. Isn't that right? right? Holy, Holy Ghost. Y'all all right tonight? Good. I didn't notice you up there singing. You remind me of Corbin. Y'all about the same size. He's a big old boy too. And he's fresh married and everything. I really like it. I'm ble- I bless you. You hear me? Holy, holy, (laughs) I don't know, I just enjoy myself. I tried that other way, soldier all the time stuff, that's boring. (laughs) 
Then I got out there in one of those war zones and I had 40 of these radical Muslims with AK-47s fixing to shoot me. <coughs> and I figured out I needed some joy because this was, this was going to get bumpy. <laughs> and I chose joy. And I, I'm going to stay with that. Because <laughs> I am a soldier and I'm a really good one and I'm really good at my job and I'm not flexible in lots of things. But the joy of the Lord is where the strength lies. Isn't it? Holy, holy. So are we going to put on some tunes or something? You don't have to. In the village we don't most of the times. Sometimes we do though. I, mainly for y'all. <laughs> I'm going to get busy here in a minute. I ain't going to know what's happening around me don't, and not going to care much. What are we after? Isn't that right? See, old Corbin got killed out there. You don't, I don't think y'all know that. And uh, It was not all right. And I had to handle it. God brought the boy back to me. Yeah. That's another thing you need to ask Joseph Hogan. As soon as I saw old Corbin, because I was traveling, Miss Hogan was actually the one that handled the death, as well as the resurrection. Yeah. That old big boy come up to me. God raised him. I'm, I'll probably say that tomorrow. I'll probably talk about that tomorrow if that's, if that's all right with y'all. It's quite emotional for me, though. That was rough, buddy. That old big boy come up, put his head on my shoulder. You know what he said to me? Thanks, Papa. Awesome, huh? It's awesome to have a grandson like that. And it's also awesome to have a grandpa that can help you. <laughs> Fire the Lord, come. Come, Holy Ghost, get us. Holy. Debbie, take this noisy thing away. <laughs> 